Invitational. I am Stress alongside Pulse here for all the action this weekend and we have eight fantastic challenger teams for you in this tournament starting off the day with Meet Your Makers going up against Eyes On You in a best of three. Yes indeed, thank you for having me Stress. This is not my normal waking hours but I'm happy to be alongside casting you today or casting with you today as you can see I've only just woken up. Meet Your Makers <laughs> and Eyes On You ready to get into this and Meet Your Makers, well they've had a couple of roster changes and by a couple of roster changes I mean Charu's back and it's the same roster that we all know and love from the LCS. So Cast and Ziggs at Laugh and Fresh will be the first couple band champions. Yeah, not too surprising there's a couple of uh, big uh, carry champions that have been banned out here and actually a Yasuo banned out which is one of the first times we've been able to see Yasuo in a competitive environment so kind of strange to see him banned out already. Uh, a lot of players in solo queue have been trying to find the role with Yasuo whether he's top whether he's mid so interesting to see that they've already weighted this as kind of an unknown maybe these guys know each other from uh, solo queue as well. Yeah, it's one of those kind of random factors that you just don't want to give them. Um, and at this stage when there's so many good picks, and there's so many picks that you're going to be getting yourself, Yasuo, Yasuo is a pick that you can just say, okay, we don't want this in the game, just so we know what we're going to be up against. Because, okay, one of the champions you're going to pick up is going to be very strong, but at least we've played against it before. We're not going to be like, oh god, it's Yasuo bot lane AD carry. You know, <laughs> it's not something that's that um, not used to playing against. Yeah, but what that has left up is Shivana, Annie, and Mundo, which are three incredibly strong picks in the current meta, and they've all been locked in, as you'd expect. Shivana being picked up uh, in that first rotation out of MYM, and then followed up by Elise and Jinx, and Lucian's still available as well. These bans being focused on the mid laners so much has let so many high profile champions through in this pick and ban phase that already we're six picks in. And oh my goodness, these teams look pretty strong. Yeah, there's so much left open as well. They can just completely fit out their rosters with the strongest champions in the league right now. And that also comes from the Olaf banner. I mean, he he is seen, but maybe not as much as the common top laners like Shivana, like Mundo, and even Nasus to some extent as well, where you just go farming simulator. But Lucian, I would not be surprised at all if we see this locked in. And uh, typically against Lucian, you would like to pick up a champion um, such as Caitlyn just to kind of neutralize that lane so it doesn't become an issue when you trade up against him. Especially when he has Annie alongside him, it's not a lane you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. But Jinx, especially alongside someone like Zyra, can really just control that lane away from them. And there's a return to the jungle for a champion that does get picked up uh, somewhat in solo queue, but has seen kind of a drop-off, and that's Jarvan. We, I believe Monte Cristo was talking about it yesterday in OGN as well, just hasn't quite seen as much play when there's been a few champions that do things a little bit better, like Vi, for instance, is... Uh, doesn't trade quite so well, but has very, very good control in team fights, and it's just one of those things that Javan's seen a little bit of a drop off, and it's interesting to see him back here. Yeah, that might lead them towards a different type of mid lane pick here, Stress. They might pick up uh, a more AoE centric mid laner, which Javan definitely chains into, uh, especially with Orianna still being open. They might decide to go for that, but that wouldn't mean. Uh, that they necessarily wanted to go for Orianna because they could have just gone for Vi, as you just mentioned. So we'll see what they're really looking for. But what Jarvan does bring to the table that Vi doesn't is, of course, the Cataclysm. Yeah, yeah, that AOE crowd control in the team fights, it's uh, going to be able to control things a lot. And as you said, Orianna is available. She's a very consistent mid lane pickup. And we're looking at the teams here. I have to imagine that that's going to be a Kha'Zix in mid. Otherwise, uh, you know, there's a, a good few champions that are a little bit versatile on the MYM lineup. There's quite ambiguity about it. But uh, I expect Elise to be in the jungle with Kha'Zix in mid. So I'm wondering how picking Orianna into that would fare here for eyes on you. There are a couple of options still available for them, though. Yeah, indeed, and I'm glad I called the Zyra because that means in response to the Jarvan, it makes a lot of sense because they'll be jumping in and if they do have the Orianna, then what's that? Strangle Thorns and it's just going to completely mitigate that initiation and it's very easy to read. Hell, you can do it even as he's jumping in and it will still be effective because of the uh, the delay effect on Strangle Thorns. So we'll see what they bring out as the last pickup here. So has been locked in as the Orianna. Of course, Pulse is slightly behind because he's watching off the stream, unfortunately, on mm -hmm. live client. There are only two spots for our spectators, so rather than our producer is in one of them, I'm in the other because I'm being selfish this early in the morning. But it is an Orianna, and a little bit strange that they haven't picked up Vi, but Orianna Javan is no stranger of a pairing. They, sorry, they're, they're not a strange pairing to see together. They're very consistent. You get the Cataclysm, you get the Shockwave, good AoE crowd control. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a very solid team setup, especially with the Mundo in top lane, just constant damage. Annie in the bot lane, these are very competent lanes as well. And, and looking at the MYM lineup, there's nothing really weak in those laning phases, so they both do very similar things here, Stress. It's a little bit terrifying to me, actually, that they've got Elise and Shivana and Kha'Zix, but when you look over at the Eyes on You team, they've got equally strong picks. Uh, they just w have different play styles. You've got MYM, they're going to be able to find somebody, they're going to split push and blow somebody up pretty quickly, whereas Eyes on You are looking for a little bit more of that team fight with the support from Mundo, hopefully being able, you would imagine, to uh, contend with a little bit of that split push, but then get towards the fight, and uh, Charu being Charu, of course, taking teleport. Absolutely. We are going to jump to a quick commercial break, and when we get back... Welcome back. First game of the day here in the Scan Invitational, powered by Netgear, Be Quiet, and Creative Sound Blaster. It's MYM versus Eyes on You, game number one. MYM in the blue, Eyes on You in the red. Yeah, and it looks like already we're going to have an aggressive play from Eyes on You as they aggress into this jungle, and MYM Makla will have seen them, so we'll see if we see the reaction play. Zyra is basically the queen of level 1s if they do go for this fight, and they will be seeing them as they rotate into this red bush, and Eyes on You do not have any idea that uh, the information has been let loose by MYM. Although one thing that uh, can change a level 1 team fight is... Uh... Kunsk has that charge up stun, so that incinerate is available, Can He managed to land it. Libic has been sandwiched, the damage comes out already, and Ignite comes down. He's already dropping low, but the five-man grasp which comes out. One for one trade onto the support, and Fierce has also been caught out. Flag comes down, but that's not CC, and Mackler claims a second kill. Really nice stun there out of Kunsk, but the team couldn't quite follow up. They were trapped around the Red Bush area, and it meant that they split up. And when they came around the corner, landed in that Grasping Roots, and that's where you were talking about Libic. So good on Zyra, and so good. A brilliant play from both supports, but just a little too spread out for Eyes on You, and then they grouped, and that's really what let them down. It was always going to be a semi-risky play from Eyes on You regardless, but because they were running the Durant Shield on Annie, it was maybe less so because they wanted to go for that type of lane, where they wouldn't be going for that immediate gold item. But the level 1 invades don't always pay out in this new meta stress. We don't usually see teams being that aggressive because it's very easy just to trade buffs. Very easy indeed. Now, I'd be surprised if MYM weren't going to take this 2-1 lead that they have now and really turn the aggression on. You can see already Stun's landing in, uh, sorry, Grasping Roots landing in that bottom lane. They're trying to force Sir Scott and Kunsk away because Lucian and Annie is a very, very strong burst lane. But if they get harassed down too much, they aren't going to be able to output that burst. Yeah, this has already changed the dynamics of these lane stress. So typically we would say that the Lucian and the Annie lane would trade off effectively against basically any lane they're up against. But now the level 1 has, uh, the first blood went to Makla, then he's got that extra bit of damage, the extra bit of training potential, he hit the level 2 slightly faster as well, and they're not able to just go straight toe-to-toe -to -toe like Lucian always usually does. And something we were talking about during the loading screen was normally we had kind of looked for the top laners to be the ones running teleport because of the aggressive plays but it's mym charu's got the teleport he's the one that's going to be aggressive here they're going to leave shivana up in the corner mid lane looking for a gank can't quite get it because great warding out already from mym yeah, indeed, that's basically just their playstyle, and it's something that um, other teams may not necessarily be used to. You just expect a top laner to be the one moving all the way across the map. That will, however, mean he's more isolated in that respect. We saw, see the harassment going down in the bottom lane, and Mokata looks for the gank onto the top lane, or maybe just looking to uh, get some of this jungle farm. It does look like we will see the tower dive, at least very good at doing this in the early game, as Koi is being pushed up against his tower, waiting for this wave to be pushed in before Mokata comes in for the kill. Yeah, and this is the point where Mundo really isn't strong enough to survive a gank like this as long as they manage to get the damage. It looks like the minion wave isn't quite big enough, so they are going to readjust and maybe wait around. But this is a lot of time wasted out of Makata there in that top lane. It's a big commitment, but trying to shut down the Mundo early means Shivana will always be stronger for, uh, than him in the rest of the game. The gank comes in from the bottom lane as well. Fierce comes out, Flag and Drag will miss, but the Flame Trumpets will be locking them up. The Grasping Roots comes across, Teleport coming down from the mid lane of Charu, but he's just dived into a three-man gank squad. Makla picks up one, two for one trade overall. And that was a good pickup, but using the Teleport is not 
a great play there out of MYM. They're not strong enough for Charu to really land the damage. He doesn't have any kind of reset ability yet because he hasn't even reached level 6. He's still only level 4 and the damage is so low right now that he's not able to convert that kind of play. And the first teleport of a game is always so very important because if it doesn't work for you, you give so much to your lane opponent in experience and gold that it's very difficult to get back into. So we have to see how Charu is going to regain control of that lane because he's heavily down in CS now. Yeah, and as a side effect, Makata Hachi had to leave the top lane to try and go for that gank and go for the mid lane to fill in the gap. We've got to see Jarvan now coming all the way from base and looking for this gank on the top lane of Kubon. Not that it quite happened because the wave is pushed up and he's probably looking to go back soon anyway. Now let's have a look at this bottom lane. We can see that Jinx already 2 and 0 at the tail end of that fight was the only one still to survive by that get excited passive allowed it to get all the way back to the turret but fairly even other than that one kill that was from that uh, earlier engagement so we'll see how these two go i believe jinx scales actually a little bit better than lucian into the game so an early lead for makla is a good sign for mym it is indeed. Makata finds himself. Power of Evil in the middle lane. Charu coming in from the side. Lee comes down. But the commitment now from Power of Evil forces Makata back into this fight. Ignite is still ticking down. The minions do not swap their aggro. And Fears does not really want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Charu either. Looking for this flag and drag over the wall. We'll get it and move back to his turret. And I'm wondering whether that's a sign of the fact that MYM haven't played with Charo in a little while. You could see they engaged at different times. Makata landed the cocoon, Charo went in, didn't quite land the jump either, and just that little mismatch of styles. And it's something that MYM have to work out because, as a lot of people in chat and, you know, on Twitter have realized, MYM are playing in LCS promotion qualifiers later today as well. So they need to get these little tweaks right in their play this morning so that it's perfect for later. Yeah, and this is kind of like their warm-up game, but Eyes on You are not any weak team. They are very strong, as they've already demonstrated in this game. Jarvan heading around the side, maybe looking just for the stealth gank, could be hopping over the wall with the flag and drag, or even waiting for this dive onto Scott, since he is very low indeed, and they do have the dive potential. They will try and use that Get Excited passive to work around that, but looks like Jarvan doesn't want to go for this quite yet. You can see up in that top lane, Kuban's pretty low, and Koi has been able to regenerate some of his health has his ultimate still available so uh, this is quite a back and forth lane both will scale very well both good at uh, you know sitting in the wave and just clearing it through so i'm wondering when we're going to see that first aggressive play in that top lane i kind of guess it's not going to be for a little while yeah i feel like it's already been and gone because when these top laners hit level six and they get past that point it's like well neither of us can kill the other person effectively because if shivana moves on to koi he'll pop his ultimate and run away if kubon drops low he'll drag the descent out so nothing really happens unless they have um a gank but before that they are vulnerable that's why we saw makata looking for that gank and now that's not happened it's going to be a farming lane yeah, you can see just back and forth trading here from the two they will heal it up meanwhile in the mid lane Shockwave came down, Power of Evil drops very low, he's not actually opting to go back, but neither of the junglers around mid lane still got to be very careful because Charu has unbelievably high amounts of burst on those isolated targets. And Power of Evil here, uh, doing what you fairly commonly do on Orianna and put a lot of points into Q for that extra damage, Grasping Roots does actually land in the bottom lane, looks like they might get out of that one, but meanwhile mid lane both junglers. Makata flashes through, lands the cocoon as well, jump forwards from the leap, looks for the auto attack and the passive, last auto attack from Power of Evil will not be enough, and Repel comes up to cancel the tower aggro. A lot of action all the way around the map, and that was actually a, a side point of what I was going to mention, was there's only one point in the shield now from Orianna, and you've got to try and survive some of that burst from Kha'Zix. It's not all that standard as in the top lane Dragon's Descent. Yeah, so saying, commitment has come down and the Ignite, but the ultimate already preemptively popped by Koi, and uh, Kuban will not go any further. Yeah, you've got to survive through at least one rotation of Kha'Zix to make it so that he doesn't just end up getting resets and killing your whole team. So uh, a little surprising there to not see at least the second point put in that E out of Orianna. Yeah, but Makata found himself caught by Fears. No real fall off apart from Oriana, who is a little ways behind as Mundo also came in to react. But that will be securing his own red buff. Now Charu finally has that aggressive stance. Will go force the flash from Power of Evil over the wall. And Charu really just has found his groove now in that lane. Yeah, indeed. Six and three 
it will be the overall score for MYM as Makata is in a battle to the left with Charu because he was trying to uh, move away or push away uh, Power of Evil in that middle lane. And wow, you can see Power of Evil just really isn't able to stay in that lane. Forced to recall already, he's on half health and normally he'd like to stay around in the mid lane at that point and uh, maybe even look to farm wraiths. But you can see Charu just constantly looking for it, has the ward. Might be in a little trouble though. He might have gone a little too far here, Stress. The ultimate has already been popped and both charges used. Shockwave is up off of that cooldown. Auto attacks come down. It's not going to be quite enough to finish off Fizz before he uses his last breath. A little bit overextending there from Charu. Thought he could get the kill, and had it been Ariana on her own, probably would have been able to, but uh, not with Jarvan there as well. You can see good job in this bottom lane as well. Libic zoning away, does land the Grasping Roots. Yep, and pushing back Scott again. They're always on the back foot, being zoned away even from the uh, experience range of these creeps in the, in the uh, in the bottom lane. Let's take a look at a quick look at the CS scores. So it's going to be 81 to 60, a significant CS gap already this early into the game here, Stress. Yeah, that is uh, quite a significant gap, and you can see already that uh, those early kills have gone quite a long way into helping that. And interesting build choices here out of both. You can see Sir Scott... He's going for that Bloodthirster first variant on the Lucian build as, uh, that will give him additional damage onto the culling. We'll delay his Trinity Force a little bit, but the gold that you use on the Trinity Force uh, is a little bit mismatched for the damage early on. You do lower the damage. As you can see, MYM did have the position on the dragon. Yeah, it was a quick rotation. He might even go for the fight on top of that. The teleport is already coming in from the top lane of coin. Makata is completely out of position. Does he still have the repel? The answer is a yes, but there's nowhere to jump to unless back onto his own original position and will be taken down. So a kill for a dragon, they'll take that. Yeah, MYM will be happy with that. They obviously wouldn't like to die, but the rotations here coming out from Eyes on You may make it a little bit less favorable here for MYM. They've got three in the middle lane, and they will be able to get this turret here. And uh, that's a good play out of Eyes on You. It is, but we do have Coupon from the backside. He might just look to clear out the mini wave with Dragon Descent. Indeed, he will. Fears takes another tower shot. Coupon and Charu will not follow any further, but the ultimate from Jinx will be blocked by Cap a power of evil. That's a really nice play, actually, out of Kuban there. He'd pushed all the way to the turret, as Shivana does oh so easily. Managed to rotate down to that middle lane. They've saved the mid lane tower, so MYM do get the good trade there. 17.7k gold to 16.3. MYM have a slight lead here in this game. Yep, so we'll have to look at uh, kind of the whole feel of the game because we've already said that NY have a slightly more mobile composition with the champions they've picked, more of a controlly type composition, but Eyes on You have such a good team fight. if they catch NYM in a really bad position, it doesn't really matter if they're maybe 10 kills behind, they'll still have that inherent burst, so that's something that NYM are always going to have to be wary of, but if they just win their lanes outright, there's no need for them to clump up. You can see already they're itemizing towards that big damage that's going to come from the Shockwave. Hexdrinker picked up already onto Kha'Zix. It's going to give him some vi survivability. Down in the bottom lane, Cataclysm comes out. Yeah, Makata will jump into the Cataclysm. Culling has been used this time. Charu's uh, teleport has been used to good effect, and Tibbers will be dropping in the fray as well. Really nice play again. Using that teleport this time, as you said, it worked out a lot better being able to get a lot more damage down from Charu. They do get the turret from that, and with Dragon not available, they may look to just push this one further. Flash comes forward, not able to land the cocoon, but they do secure that CS there. Yeah, he was definitely stunned up on that minion, and they were able to take that down. But the bottom lane is being pushed forwards, and if they can't clear this way quickly, Makla will completely destroy this turret with his Pow Pow. They do land a nice stun, though, onto the MYM. Four stack there, but not quite able to follow up. There comes the shockwave. Is Libic trying to run away here through their own jungle? Yep, Makasa is always going to be the sacrificial lamb for these objectives, but Libic has been forced to use the flash. Zap comes through, and the flash flag and drag from Fierce. A little far in front of his team, but he doesn't have anything to be scared of. Makla continuously being battered away. Another dragon strike comes through. These at last auto attack distance comes forward. One more auto attack will seal it. There's the kill for Fierce. Another flag and drag, but that's all they're getting for this one. Oh, Makla was expecting another dragon strike, so he's strafing side to side, <laughs> trying to avoid it. Unfortunately, wasn't quite available on cooldown, and the dodging around actually slowed his movement to a point where they just managed to walk up and hit him. 
that's one of the problems with juking too much is you can slow yourself to a point where they can just run up and auto attack you. <laughs> yeah, and you cannot juke an auto attack, so uh, unless you're you're old jacks, but you know that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but uh, now uh, we just have Power V. We're picking up his blue buff and uh, could be moving back into the mid lane or just in fact farming the jungle. Nothing really to be scared of with that middle turret going down, and he's got kind of uh, a safety barrier before Chari pushes all the way up again. But MYM managing to get that inner tower in the bottom lane has set up their mid game very nicely. Their objective here is that Kuban or Charu will split push down in that bottom lane to draw attention away from the Baron pit. That'll give them a little bit easier of a time at bursting down that Baron and make sure that Eyes on You can't be there for their entire team fight. However, the teleport will make that a little bit different. Yeah, Dragon's Descent has come forth, Stronger Fallen comes up, but. The flash comes down from Koi, and that was a very fast Zyra. I was not expecting that with Mobility Boots. Mobility Boots, Sightstone before even going for the Talisman of Ascension, so a little bit of a uh, departure from what we've seen out of supports more recently. You can see over on the side of Kunsk, they've got the Sightstone and the Ancient Coin, so we'll be building towards the Talisman of Ascension. Haven't really chosen to go for it quite yet, though. Yeah, but now that Libic has picked up a very early Ruby Sightstone, oh, Fears, this is not where you want to be. He only wanted the farm of the Freeman Dive comes out. Kuban picks up the kill with Venice Bite, and Koi is, uh, well, just wanders into his lane, and there's not a tower there anymore. I believe you're about to mention with the Ruby Sightstone the way that now MYM can get that rolling set of wards. They have more wards available to them. Of course, you only have a maximum of three available to a player, but this is going to give them even better map control as they do push forward. And one of the things we're seeing more and more out of teams is this departure from the, the sight uh, trinkets into the red trinkets as the game goes on. And I wouldn't be surprised to see MYM pick up more of the red trinkets. Normally we'll see about three during the mid game. You can see already, there you go, Makata sold, sold his ward trinket, has picked up the red trinket. Yeah, allows you to do that a little bit faster. It means that you're not going to be committing those uh, that gold into the into the um, into the wards, but you already have that ruby sidestone, and then you can go for the gold item afterwards, and it will be. Uh, I'm not really. You can see your power of evil though. Even though he was under quite a bit of pressure in that mid lane, has done himself a good job farming. Was picking up rates that he could get around there as well. The game it is by no means over yet. They just have to be careful then MYM don't start taking too many objectives too quickly. Being kind of cut up, but the zoning control already jumped onto Fears. More damage comes down, he is very tanky at this stage. We do have to remember that Koi has his teleport available to him and Siobhan does not. And we'll see how that factors into this next fight. Dragon's Ascent up in that top lane actually got burned out as Koi was forced to use his ultimate. They really don't want Koi getting down to this fight. Yeah, indeed, but if he does move, then Siobhan is instantly going to clear out that wave and will be a threat in the top lane, so it will be a huge commitment if they go for it, and MYM forcing the issue, deleting Quint already, jumps out with the reset, Mukata is still on the back lines, and they will be trying to save him, Repel comes up, he's going to have to come back down again at some point, will be on the same spot, and another fantastic grasping route onto free. Super Mega Death Rocket comes across onto Koi. He has teleported down, and now's the time for Shivana to push forwards. But with this being a 4 versus 4 in the Dragon Pit, it's going to be Eyes who are going to have to back off. Koi came to the fight on low health. Actually, Fears looks to go aggressive back onto Makla. Lands a nice grasping roots there onto the jump in from Charu. It's reset time again, jumps in, jumps out, another jump forward onto, onto the job and will result in a double kill for him dropping himself. So that Scott's found himself, Makla, Koi is already on top of his face, but Quint has respawned this fight, it's been so long. A flash forward, oh, the three man stun from Quint result in a three man kill. Oh, and eyes looked like they were having the really bad end of that by the fact that when Koi teleported down, he was on low health with no ultimate, and they tried to start the dragon. They got caught with a massive uh, ultimate out of Makla, and then followed up with the grasping roots. But Kunsk being back, very nice incineration skin here. I'll just walk away. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I post in this game, you know, I'm the main contributor. That's how we roll in. I knew, but the red buff will be falling to Makla, and we take them all. A slower pace of this game because I've already had almost 30 kills in 20 minutes. Yeah, it has been a bit of a bloodthirsty game here, and uh, you can see the death, uh, sorry, the kill uh, spread on the teams. 
I have to say it is going to favor MYM. Having six kills on an assassin like Kha'Zix is going to mean that a zero and two Mundo really isn't going to play the role that he needs to by just soaking so much damage. You need to be at a point where really the team can survive two bursts from Kha'Zix. If he doesn't get any kills during that rotation, He's just not going to be able to reset to kill somebody like Koi if he had the items. However, at 6 and 3 with the last wisp going to land eyes on you. This is the round of 8 in the scan invitational powered by Netgear, Creative Sandblaster, and Be Quiet. You can see MYM already pushed up Charu. He's hunting through the jungle, looking to prey on one more member of eyes on you. Yeah, but this time Fears will jump over the wall to flag and drag. Now Quirks will be coming in to this action as well. Jumps over the wall, actually angers the Baron. Doesn't look like it's quite going to be enough, but we'll pop his Hex Drinker. And uh, yeah, it looks like hopefully our lag should be fixed from that one, guys. As uh, you can see, that Hex Drinker did get popped. Cheru managed to get himself out alive. And Blade of the Rune King has been picked up on Shivana. I think he's had that for a little while, but haven't really made too much note of that. Shivana, with that time up in that top lane has been able to get a good CS lead, and that's one of the byproducts of having Teleport on a champion like Mundo, who, uh, is, when he goes out of lane, Shivana is going to be able to push that lane as hard as she wants. Yeah, and Kuban has felt so comfortable in the top lane. As you mentioned, Stress, he's picked up the Blades of the Rune King, which is something you don't typically do unless you're very comfortable. Otherwise, you'll go for those defensive items. Sometimes, if you want to be aggressive, you'll pick up the uh, the Sunfire Cape for the extra AoE damage over time, and then you'll pick up something like a Spirit Visit, and then maybe you'll go for your damage item. But because Mundo is not threatening him at all, in a head-on fight, there's no way Koi can face down Kuban. And you can see the itemization of Eyes on You is starting to swap heavily towards not getting bursted down by Kha'Zix. Oriana has picked up a needlessly large rod, and I can imagine that uh, that's going to go towards a Seeker's Arm Guard, uh, is the amplifying tome. They're looking for a fight here in the this top side of the jungle. Will they get it? Yeah, Strangophones comes up just as a uh, area denial effect. Power people not even able to get his ultimate off. Charu is getting the reset. Koi is one of the last guys standing as uh, Scott is off to the side. He's already running for his life away from Charu. He gets the kill. There's no one really to follow up. Super Mega Deathrock is already on cooldown and Koi is also just wandering away from this fight. They're gonna try and mop this up with Makata's long range and repel and it looks like they will move into the middle lane as well. <laughs> Makata just chasing out Lucian as far away as they can to force him to recall. They're not going to be able to get this tower by the looks of things as Koi is standing in front of it. He's uh, going to burn through that wave with that burning agony. However, MYM feel like they might be able to rotate here around to the Baron and this is quite a bold play. They do have a lot of health on Kuban, but the rest of MYM are fairly low here. Yeah, this is pretty risky. Koi's going to be coming around the side, finding himself the rest of the team. Charu is back. He's got the isolation damage on Baron. And Livic will be zoning away like a champion, probably going to fall for his troubles. Quince gets the ignite down on him. He will, in fact, yes, he will drop. And Fit is also running away with the rest of the team. Zap lands double kill, but Charu gets the reset. And the flag of drag will make sure he's safe from that one. In fact, Livic survived. Not even sure how that even happened. And that's quite a bold play out of MYM. I mean, they've kind of departed from their composition where they were looking for that split push into then taking Baron. Both lanes in top and bottom are actually pushing in towards them. So the, the decision to go from mid tower where they would have had to have dealt with Koi to quickly rotating around for Baron is a very smart play out of MYM and shows you the flashes of the MYM that we saw in that first week or so of LCS. Yeah, it was a snap decision, and it was really right down to the wire. And, like, a couple more seconds, and that would have completely backfired and probably changed the dynamics and shifted this game into uh, Eyes on You's direction. But as it is, almost with a 10k advantage, MYM looking incredibly strong. Looking strong indeed, and as they uh, look to close this game out, Eyes on You... Again, they have to be careful that they're not just giving away all of these objectives. Of course, Dragonworth a little bit more now, but is it worth fighting over four eyes on you? You have to wonder that it isn't. So there's not all that much that they can do to stop these objectives going. However, eyes on you's team composition does lend them towards a good team fight where they can get all of their abilities off. And MIM are looking quite aggressive here and they're not all together. Yeah, and as a kind of, um, as a factor as with that 
great team fighting composition, they can't just go for uh, a team fight under turret because they're locked them down with Cataclysm, they have the CC, they have the damage, even at this stage to kill them under turret. So they can't make these bold plays in those situations just to say, we're this much stronger, we will just win the game here. So it's going to stall it for another couple minutes. Now, MYM looking to push up towards this middle lane, however, there's quite a few members of Eyes on You here. They've got to be careful that they don't have the best Siege comp here. They're more of a dive comp when Sharu can get his resets, but a full health team of Eyes on You is a little bit difficult for them to burst down without committing all that much to it. As you mentioned, that Cataclysm under the turret means they're going to get locked down, so... Not too sure that having five stacked in the middle lane is going to be the best strat here for MYM. I would like to have seen either Charu or Kuban off in one of those side lanes pushing it through. Yeah, it's actually very difficult for them to do very much, but they are going to go for the tower dive. Stronger Funds comes up. Kuban is tanking four members, already flashes out. Super Mega Death Rocket will land on Fears. It's not going to be quite enough damage to finish him up, and Livic is very low himself, always dropped into the death chamber. And after that, no casualties. Yeah, and that really hinders MYM. If they don't get kills from an engagement like that, they can't get Charu rolling. Even though he's 10 and 4, unless he gets a kill, he's not really that useful at sieging. However, Koi does get locked down. Shockway comes through. The Timbers are stunned onto two. They haven't quite picked up a kill yet, but Fierce has come back from base. He's full HP and all the damage as well off to the side. The Brutes will come forward as he gets uh, locked down by the Flame Chompers walking back into them. But that's a one for zero trade. Favor to Eyes on You. And I'm not sure why MYM were continuing to siege there, even after not getting the kill. Charu has gone aggressive again. He's still gone for a Fierce this time. Is in the middle of four people will finally drop. So both the jungles have fallen, So and this time that has actually worked out, and those are some very low squishy targets which are just resets for Charu. And that's a, a byproduct of Koi teleporting to that top lane. Eyes on you didn't communicate that properly that Fears was going in. Koi was already up in that top lane and MYM were given the opportunity to just delete targets just like that, and that might be the opening that MYM need. They will get an inhibitor here. Yeah, this is going to chunk this down, and Koi has already moved back. He picked up a tower. That's really not worth it for an inhibitor and his jungle of falling. So two targets have already dropped into the death chamber, and MYM will be very happy with that result. Now, how can Eyes on You bounce back on this one? Of course, we are on 3.15, so it does mean that the inhibitors and in the preseason, of course, will only start spawning super minions in that one lane, so it's not quite as uh, as difficult to come back from as we've seen previously where you're really in a lot of pressure by pushing in through all three lanes. MYM still have a little bit of work to do here to make sure their lanes are all pushing but it's something they've been uh, a little bit sloppy on. They've had lanes pushing in towards them while they're trying to siege a number of times here and it just would make it a little bit easier for them if they make sure that their lanes are all pushing in towards eyes on you. Yeah, they have two very, very strong split plus duelists as well in the form of Shivana and uh, also uh, Charu on Karzik. So they could just send those off to the side lanes, have that three man stack in the middle lane who have very strong disengage as a result of having Makla on Jinx and also Livic on uh, on Zyra as well for the stronger fawns and also the grassing roots. So it's going to be very difficult to aggress onto that three man stack. While those side lanes, there's no one who can one versus one duel against these guys, maybe apart from Jarvan, but they don't have two Jarvans. So they're not going to have an answer for both of those <laughs> pushes. Yeah, they, they don't have two Javans. That would be quite scary. You could see stacked cataclysms for a Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I kind of feel like Koi might be able to survive uh, a rotation or two just about. He has got a little bit more armor than he did earlier with those extra cloth armors, but it's just whether they feel like committing to that and seeing whether it's going to work, because Mundo should be able to hold a split push. In it, incredibly better so with teleports it means he can cross for team fights but if he gets bursted down in one rotation out of a very strong charu it really just pretty much ends the game for eyes on you yeah it's basically can charu get a reset on one of the squishies in the first couple seconds of the fight under turret if yes they win if no then they disengage and might lose a member for it they have it's good Put Tankin now that he's probably not going to be one of the guys who is going to instantly drop, and so neither is Jarvan. So it's just going to really come down to this positioning. And if uh, if Sir Scott goes a little too far forward to clear out this wave, he could be that man going down. You can see that Eyes on You have got decent wave clear though right now. They're able to clear with the Ariana Ball, 
and the abilities out of Sir Scott as well. So it's very difficult for MYM to siege. We discussed this earlier and it almost backfired if it hadn't have been eyes on you with a, a little bit of a mistake with their shot calling. Now lanes are pushing in, but MYM are actually pulling back. They don't have that siege potential. They need mid lane to really be pushing in so that uh, they can split eyes on you up as much as possible. However, MYM know that Baron has come up. Dragon is about to come up as well. So they're looking to take out the global objectives. Yeah, they're keeping Karzix around the dragon just to take that by himself, and then they'll just move to Baron if necessary. They actually recalled everyone so they could all stack up their items, and they have a huge item advantage. In fact, everyone contributing to the ward, so they're going to completely pepper the Baron area in vision and make sure they know exactly where Eyes on You are if they try and contest us. Eyes on You have grouped around for this, but of course, the longer that MYM delay on this with the inhibitor down, the more time they've got from mid lane pushing in. Eyes on you do have to deal with that, so they've sent a couple of members across. This will, however, open up the Baron Pit for clearing the wards from MYM. We don't look like they're in position, though, to take the Baron quite yet. Yeah, they can take it very quickly with Elise and also Karzix. That's a very good team for taking Baron. But if they get caught by a coin, that's not going to help at all. Jinx, coming back from base, we might well see a 5 on 5 fight. This is exactly what MYM need because Eyes on You cannot go for 5 on 5, but at the same time, they cannot just let them take Baron. So they're going to have to move outside of their base. And that's the only thing that has been keeping MYM back from winning this game. The inhibitor has respawned for eyes on you, and the last super minion has been killed as well, so it means that if they were going to commit for a 5 on 5, now's the time to do it. This is last chance to loon for them, Koi jumping in, he's used his ultimate, lands the shockwave onto one, that will be the steal for Fierce, now they go for the team fight with those increased stats, the cataclysm comes down, immediately popped, the first kill goes to Charu, the first blood of the fight, the reset comes in, there's the second, there's the third, moves on to Fierce, flying a drag over the wall, only delaying the inevitable I feel a zap will just whip past him but they don't even need to go for this chase unless Charu desperately wants his quadra Fierce is just trying to use as much time as he can scumbag Jinx will pick up the ace but this is surely the game here stress and a really nice steal there out of fears but it's not enough because they committed so hard to it they opened up the back line and that is not something you can do against the Kazakhs they just sent Koi straight into the middle of the Baron pit Fears followed up they drifted away, Charu just jumps in, annihilates a member of Eyes on You, Sir Scott fell instantly, and that should be the game here for MYM, as you said. Yeah, it was like Eyes on You were just sending forth their offering of Mundo, and it's like, here's your reset, O oh, Karzix, and then they, he just murdered everyone, that's how Karzix works. But they might be able to repel this push onto their Nexus, but Mackler looking for blood, Quisk already onto the spawn pad, Super Mega Death Rocket finishes them off, and this might be the time to move this back into another one team fight. Koi picks up the shutdown, and Mackler will be locked up by Fears, but everyone's dropping very low from MYM. Nuking down Koi, however. Powers of Evil. There's the good shockwave. Levick falls, but the repel comes up. Makata finishes him off. And moving on to the spawn pad, Makla is not going to kill him, but the Nexus will be dying. <laughs> Makla has to lifesteal a little bit to stop Power of Evil from killing him. Makata will be able to take this down. They want that last kill. Makla decides to take it down at the end of the game there, just to make sure that they close that one out. A fairly convincing performance out of MYM, but there was a little bit of a shaky structure to some of their calls that they need.